Well, tornadoes um, could certainly, um, you know, they, they can happen, I guess, technically any time of the year, but they, you know, certainly here in Pennsylvania, they, they are most common in the, in the late spring um, and the early part of summer, uh, really like now, where we are now, the May, June, uh, it's kind of like the peak season. You know, you could have a hot, humid day and it does nothing. We've always seen those days where start to finish, it's like you can barely even get a cloud to form. As meteorologists, we like to say we use the term a trigger. You need something to trigger the atmosphere to get um, a thunderstorm to develop. Um, if you don't have that trigger, then the trigger could be um, a mountain, you know, where you're blowing the air up, up a mountain. Uh, it could be uh, a cold front. And that's oftentimes what it is. It might be a, a disturbance in the upper parts of the atmosphere um, that comes along and causes the air to lift and and thus, you know, uh, you, you get the formation of thunderstorms. So um, without that trigger, you could have the most, you know, the hottest, most humid air mass in the world and nothing will ever happen. It'll just be quiet. So you need a trigger. You need something to to get the air to rise and to get those cumulus clouds, those puffy, you know, cauliflower type clouds to start growing into these big clouds um, that will eventually produce a thunderstorm. So that's one thing, you gotta get a thunderstorm to form. You can never get a tornado if you don't first <laughs> get a thunderstorm generated. Um, but to just, the, the difference between having a, you know, just a run of the mill um, garden variety thunderstorm that produces some thunder, lightning, downpours and so forth, maybe a little gust of wind. The difference between having that versus something that's severe uh, and noteworthy and maybe damaging or even life-threatening, the difference there is how much wind there is in the atmosphere and, you know, through the whole, from the bottom, from the ground right on up, how much wind there is, how strong the winds are. Obviously, the stronger the winds, the greater the potential for something severe. And then um, you could get a thunderstorm, you could get a strong or a damaging thunderstorm, but if you don't have the what we call shear or twisting or turning of the winds as you go up, um, then you'll get a, you get a very violent thunderstorm. But then what you would have from that is what's called straight line wind damage. Everything all blows in the same direction. So if, if the survey crews from the National Weather Service look at a site that got like a barn roof got blown off or trees down, power lines, everything, and they look at the damage, everything is blown in the same direction. And that's called straight line wind damage. Certainly bad, and it could, could be you know very violent. Um, but to get a tornado, the, the 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 classic signature of a tornado is to see when they when they do the damage assessment, and they actually see a circular motion. Like they'll see maybe some debris lining that way, and then a short distance, you know, something else is blown in another direction, and you could just see that there's mm -hmm. definitely a circular pattern to the way. Uh, the damage, uh, the the debris, and everything is 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 laying on the ground, and that that's a classic signature of of, uh, of a tornado. So what you like to see for tornadic development is as you go up into the atmosphere, um, the winds change, the wind direction changes with height. Those days we could see, we could um, we could kind of sniff out those days when the potential is you know, whether it's slight, whether it's a moderate risk day, whether it's a pretty high potential that you're gonna get uh, bad thunderstorms and tornadoes. We usually have a pretty good idea ahead of time that there's at least that potential um, that you're gonna get some, some crazy weather going on. But to say, you know, exactly where it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be, uh, you know, in Lingolstown <laughs> and, and not in, you know, not over uh, Halifax or you know, those, you, there's no way you could tell where they're going to be until they actually happen, until you actually see them for, form and then you can track them along uh, on radar. This, these are two graphics uh, from the Storm Prediction Center, uh, a branch of NOAA. This was ye uh, yesterday, the 29th of, of May, and it shows the number of uh, uh, storm reports across the country, the color-coded tornadoes red. Uh, wind uh, wind reports uh, blue and then hail reports are, are green. This is uh, another graphic uh, 
that actually shows the from the beginning of the year, uh, from January 1st. Now here's tornadoes. I mean, there's, <laughs> you could see, I mean, obviously, the, but there's quite a few in the east here. There's wind damage, and then there's large hail. So the pattern we've been in, up until, up until about two weeks ago, it, the, the season was running about normal. But then in like the last two weeks, it's gone crazy. You know, from the Plain States, from the Midwest, all the way to the, to the East Coast. It's, it's just gone absolutely berserk. And the setup there, without, again, getting really technical, you had a, you had a big ridge, big bubble of warm air, very warm air over the southeastern states, the south central and southeastern states. That's pretty much just been sitting down there. Just a big bubble, just a big ridge that's been, you know, oscillated back and forth, but it's been over the southeast for many days. That's why it's gotten, we've had heat records down, you know, in Atlanta and Birmingham and these places, and it really hasn't rained to, to speak of. Um, at the same time, back up in here, got just take a quick look at the country, and you can kind of even see the see up on the picture there. There's um, over the southeast how like how clear it is over the southeast, and that's where that ridge still is, and it's been basically there uh, for the last for the last couple of weeks. At the same time, you've had a very anomalous pattern in the western states. And it really, if you look at the, the huge dip in the jet stream over the West for the last like two or three weeks, um, it, it, it would be a pattern you'd see more like in February or March. One storm after another, after another, after another, just keeps coming into the Western states through the Rockies. They've had, they've had late season snows. I mean, it's not unusual to get spring snows in the Rockies, but they've gotten more and way later in the season than they normally would get. Um, and so these storms coming this way, so you kind of have the contrast of the heat and humidity, the blob over here, and then the storminess that keeps coming in from the west. And then these storms go this way, into the plains, up into the Great Lakes, and this way. And so this zone, really from the Plain States into the Mid-Atlantic and into the Northeast, has been a very, very active zone. You're near the boundary between the cool air. It's been staying very cool. Uh, no, notice the, the lack of, of course, lack of tornadoes, but um, even the lack of wind damage. I mean, you get up into the far northern part of New England, northern New York state, and it's just, it's been hanging on to some very cool, un unusually cool weather up north and into Canada. So you've had that contrast zone that's been setting up right in here, and, and it really hasn't gone anywhere.